I come from a small community in northern Quebec called Winaway, which is Long Point First Nations. And I also come from Gunnawage. So my dad comes from up north, my mom comes from southern Quebec. So I live in a small town called Barrie, kind of small. <laughs> and uh, I'm a musician. I uh, work in music. I'm a producer, uh, engineer. Uh, I do a little bit of everything. I sing, play guitar, write music, compose. Um, I just do all things musical and uh, also teach music to kids sometimes, uh, usually uh, on the res, where um, I guess in communities that are underserved. Uh, for me, growing up in a small community, music was something that was really empowering. And so when I go back to my community or different reses, it's really great to bring music and we usually get all the kids singing and dancing and it's a, kind of a, a way for me to give back but also feels good and empowering for me inside as well. When I moved from my res to the city, um, I was a res kid and I had a crazy accent where the teachers actually had a really hard time understanding me and I was speaking a mix of like Algonquin, English and French and they were like, uh, <laughs> they were really confused. As a result, I felt really confused and I felt out of place in that community at the time. Uh, lucky enough that it was an art school and there was a certain amount of open-mindedness. So I was able to um, work with the principal and we started um, creating areas of education that was personal for me and I think it was the first time that they ever had a student uh, approach them in that kind of way because I felt like I was an outsider and I didn't want to be necessarily an outsider. I, want to, I enjoyed being an individual, but I wanted other people that came after me to have an experience that wasn't so polarized. I feel that music has been something that sort of bridged all of those types of learning styles and um, which is why today I think that, you know, Shoshona and I still go into communities and try and make those connections because if people have something that they can connect to, it makes learning easier. And for me, music was that thing that made everything easier. Surviving the impacts of institutionalized racism was quite difficult for me, uh, especially being a young person because I had gone through some massive experiences with the army and with the police and um, being abused physically and such that I really felt strongly <laughs> about where I come from and who I was. And I think one of the big things that really aided me in feeling empowered was knowing my history, knowing where I came from, um, but also knowing that history allowed me to know who I was today. And then in knowing who I was today, like I had an idea of where I wanted to go. And so um, in high school, I unfortunately had to defend myself and I had to do that physically. Like there were people that would attack me and I retaliated physically. But it was only when I was put in a corner and there was no other option out, like I would just not let anyone push me over. And it's unfortunate that I was in a system where I got pushed into those corners because I don't think that should happen to anybody at any time, uh, especially now. The curriculum has to change, but the mindset of the teachers has to change. You know, and that can only be influenced by communities coming together, having cultural exchanges, uh, participating in things like powwows or a ceremony. Like, um, a lot of the Board of Education is not really connected to the backyard. And in their backyard, it's indigenous people there. And we've been here since time immemorial. And so the system itself really has to start embracing a larger scope of what's going on around them, especially since this is indigenous territory. I've approached raising my two 
kids with kindness, honesty, to be upfront, uh, to always be truthful, to um, know who they are. So when they're making decisions and they're carrying out their actions, that they can be responsible for that and they can back themselves up, whether it's negative or positive. Um, I also let them know that it's okay to make mistakes, that we're actually here as a human being to make mistakes. And that's something that um, is not taught that often and that it's okay because that's how we actually learn is by making mistakes. Um, if everything was done perfectly every time, we wouldn't really learn anything new. So I, I ask them to be themselves. I really ask them to um, explore life with their own gifts because everybody has a different point of view and, and those points of views also change with the amount of experiences that you have in life. I would tell people that we're all human beings and that we're all related and that um, we all need to take care of the place that we live in, which is, you know, um, our body, our spirit is in the body, but also the land that we live on. Like, we really need to take care of the water, we need to take care of the air we breathe, and there's so much opportunity for ceremony in this life, and we're kind of bypassing a lot of that. And, uh, and so I think that we need to learn how to celebrate more with each other in all of our unique and individual ways of who we are.